right, so let's get on with it. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just kind of cover some basic definitions uh, that we want to make sure we cover and uh, for our rational functions unit. So we've kind of talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, up to this point, you know, graphing the reciprocal function as like noted like this, as well as graphing a function that's a rational function by using long division. And those are both rational functions, but we call them the reciprocal function because they kind of, they take a certain, um, they have a certain parent function, which is that one over x. So there's only a variable in the denominator. And here, what we're gonna be dealing, we're gonna be dealing with a rational function where basically you're gonna have n of x and d of x, which are gonna be two functions, but they're both gonna be polynomial functions. And so a reciprocal function is a rational function because if you have just a number in the numerator, that still is a polynomial. Um, but they're going to, in this case, they're also going to have some additional variables that are going to make them unique. So we can't apply the process that we use for reciprocal functions in for rational functions. So again, a lot of times we'll use this notation r of x, which just means the name of a rational function, and then n of x and d of x. Now, to give you like an example here, we could have like r of x, you know, equal x squared minus 5. And this one would be like 3x plus 1. Like that is an example of a rational function. You can see here we have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. And again, we could, you know, raise these powers up. They can be trinomials, polynomials with four terms, five terms, wherever else. Um, the main important thing is we don't have the values included. You know, we're obviously... Um, our denominator, our polynomial and denominator cannot equal zero. And because that's where the vertical asymptotes occur, which comes into our next point. But before I get to that, um, there's a couple things I do want to talk about here with these rational functions. Since these are polynomials, remember the polynomials, um, when, you're do, when you are working with these problems, graphing them or anything else, you want to make sure that you always have them in standard form because what's going to be important for the next set of problems we're going to be doing is identifying the degree. So the degree of this polynomial is two and the leading coefficient in this polynomial is one, okay? So it's very important for you to understand that. Remember, two represents the degree, which is the highest power, and one represents the coefficient of that leading term. For my d of x here, my degree is one, because if you just have an x, then it's raised to the first power, so I can, oh, well, I did dc. So you could say my degree is equal to one, and my leading coefficient is equal to three. And that's my coefficient there. So it really is important when you have, since you have your polynomials in the numerator and denominator, make sure they're in standard form uh, with the highest power first and then going in, down in descending order because it will be important for us to identify the degree and the leading coefficient of each. But now kind of getting back to my point where I talked about the denominator cannot equal zero. And what we looked at that, when we looked at our functions unit, we looked at the denominator not equal to zero, that's where our discontinuities occurred. And if you remember, there's two different types of discontinuities we talked about from a rational function. Um, we have vertical asymptotes or holes. And we will, we will look at both of these in this um, group. Just remember that vertical asymptotes are the values of x that make the denominator equal to zero. Um, and holes are the values of x that make the denominator equal to zero, but algebraically may be simplified, um, which we call removable discontinuities. So let's just go ahead and use, let's do a couple examples. So for instance, I'm going to do factored form because it's really easy to see that. So, you know, in this example, you can see that the number negative 5 makes the denominator equal to zero. When x is equal to negative 5, my denominator is equal to zero. So in this case, I would say there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5, because that makes my denominator equal to 0. Um, but if I was going to do another function, let's just say, you know, let's do f of x. Um, and let's do x minus 2 times x plus 3. And then my denominator is going to be x plus 3 and x plus 1. OK? So now what we can see is now there's two numbers that are discontinuities that are basically not in my domain when x is equal to negative 3 and when x is equal to negative 1. Both of those values make those expressions 0 and otherwise make the whole denominator equal to 0. However, there is a difference between these two discontinuities. Here we have an x plus 3 in the numerator and the denominator. So it's algebraically simplified to 1, right? It gets divided into 1. So therefore, I can simplify this expression into x minus 2 divided by x plus 1. So that is the simplified form. However, we can't just like pretend like the x plus 3 never existed. Because the, the whole is still is a discontinuity. It's not a value. x is equal to negative 3 is a not a value of the domain. So we'd say there's a whole 
at x equals negative 3. And in this case, you can see that the, the x plus 1 never got removed, so there's still going to be a vertical asymptote sorry, at x equals negative 1. Okay, so just remember holes get divided out, vertical asymptotes do not. However, they're both discontinuities uh, of the function, so they are both not going to be in the domain. And just because something gets divided out doesn't mean that it is no longer there. Like it's still a hole in the graph. So what you would need to do, and actually you could also look at this, what you need to do to find the point of where there actually is a hole, is you take the x value of negative 3, and then you can plug that into this function. So let's plug in a negative 3 minus 2 over negative 3 plus 1. And let's see, that's going to be a negative 5, and that would be a negative 2. So you could say it's also at the point negative 3, comma, negative 5 divided by negative 2, so that's a positive 5 halves. At a positive 5 halves. So, when, so what that means is when you go ahead and graph this function, like you figure out what this graph looks like, which would be using long division like we did in the last example. But you could go ahead and graph this function, but then you go ahead and find the point at negative 3, 5 halves, and you just put a hole there in the graph. So that's how you can use holes to, that's how you can go ahead and graph holes um, where they occur on the graph. All right, so we talked about vertical asymptotes. I mean, that is a review from our, rap, from our functions unit. So one of the big, big keeps that we're going to be entering now is the horizontal asymptotes. And the horizontal asymptotes is, again, when we're dealing with a rational function. And the big thing is, is understanding the degree and the leading coefficient, like I just talked about. So remember that, um, at least in my verbiage here, I'm using n to represent the degree of my numerator and d to represent the degra, de, de, degree of my denominator. Um, and a represents the leading coefficient of my numerator, and b represents the leading coefficient of my denominator. So there's a whole bunch of rules here, and I'll do like a couple examples here. So let's do the first one. The first one says, if d is greater than n. So what that means is the degree in the denominator is greater than the degree in the numerator. So let's look at a function that looks like that. Um, let's just do, you know, 2 over x squared plus 1. Now you might say, well, there's no even variable there. Well, yeah, you're right. There is a variable, though. You could also write this as x to the 0 power, because x to the 0 power is 1, right? So this technically is 2 is greater than 1. So when the degree in the denominator is greater than the degree in the numerator, then all we got to do is just say there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So whenever the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. All right, let's do the next example. The next example says if the degree in the denominator is equal to the degree in the numerator. So the next example here, let's say f of x equals, you know, 3x squared plus x over, let's do 4x squared minus 5. Now again, what we're doing is we're looking at making sure that these are in standard form. So if these were like mixed around, make sure you have them in descending order. But the main important thing is that our degrees in my numerator and my denominator are exactly the same. So when they're exactly the same, now what I do is I look at their coefficients, the leading coefficients of their terms. And the horizontal asymptote is just going to be the leading coefficient of a, which is of my numerator, and the leading coefficient over, oh, I'm sorry, over my leading coefficient of b, which is for my denominator. So the horizontal asymptote in this case is going to be y equals 3 over 4. All right, and then last but not least, um, if there is, if the de degree in the denominator is less than the degree in the numerator, then no horizontal asymptote exists. So um, this could come into kind of like, well, let's do another one. Let's do this. f of x equals, let's do, you know, x. Let's do this. Um, I'll just do a simple one. x squared minus 2. No, not that. Let's do minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so you can see the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. So therefore, there's no horizontal asymptote. Now, I'll show you why, or one example. In this example, the reason why is you guys can see if we factor this to x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, what you see is the x plus 1s divide out, right? 
So what that means is actually there is a hole. So this equation, this f of x gets simplified to x minus 1, which is just a line, right? It's a linear equation. So there's no horizontal asymptote, it's just a, a, there's just the graph is just a line, but there's a hole at x equals, uh, x equals 1. Okay, so just remember, I mean, for our case, for our mistake, now it's not always going to be holes, though. Just because the degree in the denominator is greater than the degree in the numerator doesn't mean there's always going to be a hole. Because you know, also, when this is the case, there's no horizontal asymptote, but that means we also have an oblique asymptote, which is also known as the slant asymptote. So to identify the slant asymptote, again, this only works when the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. All we're simply going to do is do long division. Now, if in this case, right, if you like weren't aware on the factoring, what you would see is if I did x squared minus 1 divided into, or let's do it this way. Um, well, yeah, let's, let's, so let's go and see what this would look like. So if I had this function f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1. So when I do long division here, x plus 1 divides into x squared minus 1. x goes into x squared, x times. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is just going to be x. And then you subtract. So it would be 0 minus x. So therefore, I have a, um, a negative x. So that's an x. So therefore, negative x minus 1, x goes into negative x, negative 1 time. 1 times negative x is a negative x, negative 1 is negative 1, and that's a remainder of 0. But we have no remainder of 0, but the interesting thing here is this is not a vertical asymptote. Um, because you can see when we actually graph this function, that is the function that it's actually graphing, which is x minus 1. Uh, that doesn't even make any sense. Okay, so now the next one is dealing with our oblique asymptotes, which are also called the slant asymptotes. And again, the slant asymptotes only occur when our degree and our numerator is going to be larger than the degree in the denominator. So basically what we're going to do to identify the um, slant asymptotes is first always look to see if it can be factorable because obviously you can see here this factors and these factor out to give us a whole so therefore there's not a vertical asymptote there so we always want to check factoring and like seeing if we have a whole rather than if there's actually going to be an asymptote. Um, but basically what we're going to do is let's just you know pick one like x squared minus 3x plus 1 and let's just do you know x plus 1 okay so here in this case you can see that the degree in the numerator is a lot greater than the degree in the denominator so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do long division all right and so 3x minus 3x plus 1 so x divides into x squared x times x times x is x squared x times 1 is x you subtract the rows or x times 1 is x that's a positive x all right subtract the rows and what we get here is a negative 4x so x goes into negative 4x a negative 4 times um, negative 4 times x is a negative 4x <laughs> and negative 4 that's going to be a negative 4 oh, shoot So then I'm subtracting the rows here again, and what you'd have is be 1 minus a negative 4, which would give you a remainder of 5. Now, it's important here that we actually don't care about the remainder in this section. Even though you could say that this is plus 5 over x plus 1, right, if you kind of remember that's what we dealt with. But the important thing to understand is, like, so if we're graphing this, like, here's my y asymptote, x minus 4 plus 5 over x plus 1. That's the vertical asymptote. That is the asymptote that my graph is going to be approaching. 
Um, well, and really what, what's happening here is as I keep on getting values of x that are larger and larger, what we notice is this x plus 1, when the denominator gets larger and larger, it actually is approaching 0. So what happens is as we get larger and larger or smaller and smaller numbers, like more and more negative numbers, what we realize is this actually approaches 0. So my vertical asymptote is just going to be y equals x minus 4. We can actually disregard the remainder. So when you're working through these problems and you're trying to find the vertical asymptote, all you simply need to do is just apply long division, and then it's going to be y equals the quotient um, without the remainder. So that's just a quick little review of horizontal asymptotes, I'm sorry, oblique asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, as well as rational functions. So therefore, you just have a little bit better idea because what we're going to work on next is looking into you know, identifying everything from a whole list of rational, rational uh, functions. So you can, can be able to graph. So that is going to come up next.